Hi, I'm Corey, and welcome to Creating with Scraps. This is actually going to be episode one of Tabs, Tags, and Tucks. And the reason for that is it's going to be in the back of my Flips, Flaps, and Folds. So this is the Flips, Flaps, and Folds idea book that we've been working on. And what I recently had to do due to the width of the book is I took out a signature. Initially, it had five signatures. And because I just sewed them in, it was really easy to cut out the center signature. So it's going to end up being four signatures. And this third signature is, we finished two. And the third signature is going to be um, largely uh, flip slaps and folds made with envelopes. There'll be a couple others, but that's gonna be the primary function. And then I thought in the very back, we can use the tabs, this sec last section for tabs, tags, and tucks, because many tags and tabs can be fit on one page. Because again, this is an idea book, not a regular journal. So this is what we're gonna be making today. In the last episode I did of the Scrap Busters junk journal um, idea book, there was uh, one of these mailbox pages and several people had asked me how to make it. So I thought I would quickly come in and show you how we can make this. One of the things I like about this page, um, this pocket, I guess, and it is a tuck, a tuck is a pocket, a pocket is a tuck, is that it's super versatile and super um, adaptable to whatever you need. If you want to cover a whole page with this, look, we've got a whole page pocket right there with a mailbox slot. Um, I use, a lot of times I'll use the Gale Fold to include in there as my journaling spot. And somebody mentioned that Gail didn't invent this. And oh, I know that. And I don't think Gail's ever taken, um, you know, said that she invented it. But that's where I first saw it. And so I call it my Gale Fold. Same thing with this mailbox slot. First place I saw it was Jibid Neary. She did it in a couple of her different idea books or her journals that she had made and sold to people. And so I think of the mailbox slot as a Jibid Neary pocket tuck kind of a thing. So you can make it just a little section of the page. You can make it an entire page. You can use book paper with this. Um, you can use thicker paper. You can use pretty much anything you want. Um, I like using vellum because it's this is a great purpose or a great project for vellum. It's sturdy enough without being too sturdy and it allows you to be able to quickly and easily see behind. Plus vellum is really thin by its nature and my books tend to get thick fast. It also allows you to use some of the colored cardstock. I know a lot of people don't use colored cardstock in their books but I, I find that the mailbox slot basically it's um you don't have to reinforce it but I highly recommend that you reinforce it simply because it's easy to tear the vellum. And with this sturdier cardstock, it allows you to slide things in and out um, fairly quickly and easily. Well, no, not because I'm trying to show you. Um, and you don't have to worry about it tearing as much. So you can see here that this is a squared off pocket or slot, and I rounded the corners. That's one option. You can make these squared or you can make them rounded, and I'll show you how to do both. And the same thing with the slot protector, basically. You can do that squared or rounded, and I will show you that as well. A couple samples here. This is just one of those vellum quotes that we had the scrapbookers a while ago, and um, where's my baby book? I just used one of those clear vellum quotes it was already printed on over a piece of book page and then rather than making a standard slot I just made the slot run from end to end and so I can tuck this in a book or I can make it an insert into a book or I can make this a double pocket I can you know here's that insert that are the signature I took out I can glue down three sides and make it a pocket back here and then make it a mailbox pocket for here so regardless of what size vellum you have or book or page you have, you can adapt this very easily and quickly. Um, here's another one. I made this one into a card. So I could have journaling space here. I could put more pockets here. I could do a wraparound, whatever. I can tuck it into the journal or I can make it a gift card. And I've got, again, options. I, this is just a folded over piece of coffee dyed paper. And I can, well, maybe I can tuck it in. And pull it out. You can see a little bit through the translucency of the vellum to, um, you know, to make your writing spot. Or I can use a regular old tag if I want to. I can just, and you can see that and you'll be able to see the writing or you could just use the back of it for your writing if you want. And those dangles, the uh, last Scrap Buster video I did with the um, side pocket paper clip tuck deal, paper clip pocket 
dangle, I guess. And somebody had um, pointed out that it was Attic Lane. So if you haven't seen her video, please go check it out. I don't, I mean, I saw it a couple of years ago. I don't remember it. And I've not ha yet had the chance to go look at it. But please, um, I don't know if she created this, but that's where I saw it initially. So thank you to whoever pointed that out. That's where I found it. Anyway, you could put it here. So you have options as far as what you put in the pocket as well and how you make it. All right. I'm going to show you two different ways to make this particular pocket. And both use, well, no, not necessarily. That's not true. Um, you can use a circle or a square. I tend to use an X-Acto knife, but you don't have to. And this is one of the things I was going to show you. If you've got this uh, hang tab punch that many of us have, you can certainly, you know, mark your start and stop spots, how far apart you want these. And you've got about a half of an inch clearance here. And you can make your slots just by scooting it along like this. Now, I'm not doing it very slowly, and you're going to see right here, see how they're uneven and jaggedy? Well, I can just come in afterwards with a pair of scissors and, you know, clean those up or trim those up because I didn't, I was quick and I didn't do it perfectly. But it's a quick way to get a slot, okay? You just scoot it right along. And then to do the cover, this is cardstock, so if I were making this the slot, I wouldn't necessarily have to cover it up with the male slot. Um, no protector part, but I really like the way it looks and so I probably would But you can certainly use this now you're you've got that what quarter inch thickness there So you're limited on how thick you can make this piece, but generally a quarter inch will work just fine You can also do just the single you don't have to put the piece on top But if you're using vellum, I highly encourage you to put the piece on top Plus it's just got a cool factor in the way it looks and you can see here by using this one, I've got a curved inside piece, whereas I use the square here, so I've got a straight. Just do whatever whatever preference you've got, or whichever you like better, whichever works for you and the materials that you have. Um, all right, I had made a video previous to this, and then I'd forgotten to mention something, so I, I came back to do it again, and hopefully a little bit quicker. I am going to show you how we made it. Now this, I can put this on, I can make this the size of uh, my journal page like I did the one in the scrapbook idea book or the um, flip flaps and folds idea book or I can just make it on a section of the page and leave this part free and stencil it or what have you. So you've got a lot of flexibility with that. All right, I start with my paper, my vellum or paper if you're wanting to use paper. And like I said, I really love vellum for this. Oh no, I was going to show you. So you can use solid paper in the background or you can use pattern paper. Like for, for example, this, this is just a, a simple clear vellum with Swiss dots and it kind of gives it a cool subtle effect over the top of it, right? If I were to use this as my pocket piece. But I can also use just a plain solid color vellum and you can see all of the paper through. Or I can use a pattern, a soft pattern vellum where you can see both the pattern of the vellum and the pattern of the paper. So one, depends on what kind of a look you're going for, and two, what kind of materials you have available to you. Don't go out and buy anything, just use what you've got. This is not one of those projects where you, you know, you have to go get stuff. Though, I mean, I think every paper crafter should have an X-Acto knife and a punch of some sort. All right, so the first thing I do is I cut my background piece and learn from my mistakes. This is the one I was going to put in my book, and I thought, oh, how pretty, except... What I do a lot of times is I flip it down like this so I can see what I'm cutting and I cut the bottom rather than the top. And who needs a mailbox with the, the slot at the very bottom? So be careful. That's my, my warning, my tip to you, my warning. All right, this is a directional print, front and back, and I want my slot to go up here. Now, one of the things I do is I move it down about an inch to get this kind of a look for a couple of reasons. One, it looks good that way and it gives you a little bit of clearance at the top. And if you're choosing to sew your vellum on, it gives you room to sew it. But two, if you're going to start with a hole, the the We Are Memory Keepers hole punch and eyelet setter that many of us have, the distance from the hole to the very bottom is about an inch. So marking it an inch just kind of makes sense. So that's my first step. I'm, I'm gonna turn it this way so that I can see what I'm doing and I'm going to go about an inch in and an inch down, simply because that works real well for me. If you go too far to the edges, you don't have room to sew, and it weakens the strength of your pocket. It changes the look. And you certainly can, but for what I'm going for here, I'm gonna go 
an inch down and an inch in, or thereabouts. And I'm just gonna make a mark so I can see it when I do my punch. Okay. All right, so I've got two marks on there and I have no idea if you can see that on the vellum. I know it's difficult on this cutting mat, but I don't like to use my glass mat for um, cutting holes. So I'm gonna come in with my hole punch and I am going to punch a hole on my first mark and I'm going to punch a hole on my second mark. And I just go all the way into the bottom because then I'm sh I'm fairly guaranteed that my holes are gonna be equidistant from the spot. And remember, I'm gonna eventually have it this way on my page. All right, then I come in and I will just you know, lay this down on my desk. And this is where I use my purple tape or your non super sticky tape and hold it down. And then I use the holes as my guide to where I'm going to cut. I am going to try to zoom in a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing. And hopefully you'll be able to see that a little bit better. So, right, so what I do is, and I'm going to reach around here, and I apologize if you get my big old head in the screen. Um, I line my ruler or my straight edge up to just, just below the top of the hole that I cut punched with the circle. Because I want to see exactly where I'm cutting. And then I'm going to just push down and bring it back. And you won't be able to see it until I pick it up. But I've cut a hole, or I've cut a slit along that line. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. I want to be able to see the bottom tip of that hole on both sides. And then that'll help me keep it straight. And that gives me my starting and stopping point. So I know how far to make my cut. And it's easy to get off track, but there we go. Okay, and I'll lift it up so that you can see it a little bit better. All right, and I didn't do it perfectly because, again, I'm reaching around a tripod. And, okay, I didn't cut it all the way. Now remember, this is the back piece, so if it's not 100% perfect, you can fix it at this point, or you can just leave it because I'm going to be putting a piece of paper on top of it, and it's not going to show. So this will be the top of my mail slot. And I did that one using the circle punch. So because I use the circle punch, I'll use the square punch this time so you can see the difference. Now again, I could certainly use the, the tab, the, the hang tag slotted one, but I want it a little bit thicker than that. And I want to show you what it looks like using the square punch. So my total dement, my total length of this slot ends up being about three and a half. So when I cut my new slot, when I cut the top piece, I wanna make sure that it's a little bit smaller than that so that it do, the ends don't show. And this is the one I did in the first video, but I'll show you how I did it. Because I want it to end up looking something like this. Now I would ink it before I glued it on. And the reason I do this, one is for aesthetics, but two, just to make the paper a little bit stronger. And I give it the clearance I need because I like to sew vellum on paper because I just think it looks a little bit better. And so it gives me the clearance I need to sew all the way around without sewing this piece. And the way I make this piece is like this. Okay, so we decided this distance from here to here is three and a half. So I want my slot piece to be slightly smaller than that. So I'm gonna come in and again, an inch from the bottom. I buried my ruler. And I want to make it just slightly smaller than three and a half inches. So and I'm being wasteful on paper, but for the sake of this. So one, two, three, three and a half. So I'm just going to make it slightly smaller. Um, mark it on those two spots. Okay. Now, if I'm using this punch, this has a really shallow clearance. And you'll see... I am not going to get anywhere near that, right? Because my dot's here and this is here. So that's not going to work so great. So I'm going to use, maybe, maybe I'm going to use, um, I moved it. And where did I put it? Ah, here we go. I'm going to use my handheld square punch so that I can get it to where I want it. But even the, oh no, here we go. It's good, it's good. It fits. Um, I'm going to line it up in that corner, make sure it's straight and punch. Same, same idea on the other side. Line it up in that corner, make sure it's straight and punch. And then I've got my starting and stopping points, okay? I'll do the exact same thing I did before. I'll lay it down on my surface. I'll tape it into place just so that it doesn't wiggle. Just helps me with the movement. And 
I will use okay again I'll use those lines this top lines as my start and stop points so that I know my line is straight and I know where to stop my cut and I'll do the same thing on the bottom Hold it in place and cut. Okay, I'll lift it up and show you and see it just, the slots just like that. Now, my next step would be, where did, where did I put it? Oh, here we go. See, obviously it's not, the outer edges are not quite right, but there you go. And you can see here, I've got a little bit of a jaggedy tooth. They didn't cut it perfectly. If I can come in here and clean that up, okay? And then I want about half to three quarters of an inch all the way around. So I'll lay it back down again and I'll either use my paper trimmer or my X-Acto knife and cut this to where it's three quarters inch all the way around. So it's symmetrical and it's got, you know, like this one, it's got kind of a visually pleasing effect. And then before I glue it down, I come in and I'll ink it because I like ink and I like the definition it gives it. So I'll come in and I'll ink, before I glue it down, I'll come in and ink around all the edges. And a nice thing about this is you can ink on the inside edges pretty easily. And you can see, you can just flex it forward a little bit and to get some ink on that edge too. All right. Then I'm going to come in with, oh, I didn't put this stopper in here. I don't know how well that'll work. I'm going to put, make sure I've got it going the right way. Put glue on the back. Yeah, that's not going to work. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Glue. And... I lay it down right. Make sure it's centered, make sure it's straight. And there you go. All right, now I'm ready to put it on whatever page I'm going to put it on. And I'll use like a dot or two of glue to hold it in place. Or a lot of times what I'll do, I'll start sewing here and here. And so then I'll put my purple tape down here and here to hold it in place and then I'll stitch 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 and then I'll lift these up and stitch the other two sides and that's it that's your mailbox slot thank you very much for watching and I'll have a another episode of flips flaps and folds I don't know if it's 25 or 26 I've got everything ready I just haven't had a chance to film it and so I'll do that in the next day or so and we'll be coming up finishing that fairly soon and um got a lot of projects in the works I'm going to show you a daffodil idea book. Well, not an idea book, but just a daffodil journal. And I'm going to show you the forest journal. I only have one set of materials to do that forest, rivers, and mountains journal. So I am going to just show you the completed project and then step out anything that might not be already available in another video or, um, you know, unique to that particular book. So that's coming up soon. Um, ah, people were asking about these ink holders, uh, the ink boxes, and I do have a video that shows you how to make them if you're handy with tools, but I, the first week of April, I have spring break, and I intend to, I've got materials to make about 100, and I've already got some of them started and cut, but the, the rest of the steps, most of them come with a single hole, because that's how I originally made it, and then room on the side for your ink brush, you know, in case you were wanting to do that. And I, and I like it really well, but I found that um, I did better. I've got some with two holes. So if you're just like a art glitter glue person, you can put your art glitter glue there and then three holes because these are the glues that I use most frequently. I did not make a hole for the Fabri-Tac because I use it very rarely, but it just keeps my whole purpose is it keeps my workspace super tidy. It's not for everybody, and I absolutely recognize that, but it helps me keep my workspace clean and organized, and I love that. 
Um, also, it holds my ink pad, it holds the lid, and it holds the pad pretty well. And I never drop this on the floor. Uh, the two for five, I think I'm going to keep doing the two for five as opposed to um, as opposed to five for ten, simply because it's less bulky and I can mail it for the 55 cents, which keeps the shipping costs down. And I've got a whole bins of scraps and I'll have some time off coming up to make those pieces. I probably have more things. Oh, and I will. I do have some, um, I do have some slow stitch needle books just about ready to go. And here was my dilemma. People said that they wanted them stocked. And the problem with having them stocked is I ordered all the stuff from Amazon and I can do it. But if you add the cost of all the pieces, like the scissors and the seam ripper and the charms and the pins and the needles and the thread and oh, what else am I forgetting? Whatever else I'm forgetting. It, they're, they're pretty spendy because the, the stuff that you put in it is roughly $30, $35. Buttons, um, uh, whatever else is in there. It's it's a spendy, bottom line. is It's oh, magnifying glass. They're spendier pieces. So people said they wanted them stocked, and I get that because you open it up and it's the cool finished effect. But um, the problem with stocking it is it brings the cost up. And, you know, that'll make the cost 60 70 bucks or some such thing. So I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to do that. Maybe I'll offer a little bit of both. I don't know. It'll just depend on what I get done. Uh, my Etsy store is creating with scraps. And oh, that brings me to another point. I got thrown in Etsy jail because when I did that um, scrapbook idea book for the one viewer, I my, my promise on Etsy was to ship within one to three days. Well, because she agreed to me making her her own book, it, it took me significantly longer than one to three days. And I didn't put shipped until I actually shipped it to her. So... Etsy locked, put me in jail or locked me out or wouldn't let people find me because I had taken longer than I had agreed upon online. And I didn't update Etsy or let them know that she and I together had agreed that I would take longer to send it because I was making her an entire journal. So for those of you who couldn't find my shop, that's why. Um, I think I'm out of Etsy jail now, but sometimes they don't let you find it when it's um, empty. And my shop currently is empty. All that to say, when I load my shop, one, I'll let you know on here, and two, I will put an actual link, because I, I think I know how to do that now. I'll put an actual link in it so you can go straight to my shop and purchase whatever you like. All right, if you've got any questions, please put them below, and I will do my very best to answer them. Thank you for watching, and happy creating.